Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moin. In this video we are going to discuss about atomic emission spectroscopy. So let's start. Atomic emission spectroscopy is a type of atomic spectroscopy in which we perform the elemental detection present in our sample. So let's see its principle first. In atomic emission spectroscopy analyte atoms are excited by heat or electrical energy. So the atoms present in our sample they are excited by using some source and that may be some heat source or the energy may be provided by some uh, in the form of electricity. The energy typically is supplied by a plasma or by using a flame in the form of heat or energy may be supplied by a low pressure discharge or by a high powered laser so these might be the energy sources so we can use any one energy level diagram for atomic sodium has been given we are going to see it in the next slide so, uh, so energy level diagram of sodium uh, will see it and it will show us that there will be the three prominent emission lines but before the external energy source is applied the sodium atoms are usually in their lowest energy or ground state so definitely when energy source is off means it is not being applied so sodium atom are in their ground state the applied energy then causes the atoms to be momentarily in a higher energy or excited state. So when energy is supplied to the atoms present in our sample, so these energy that may excite the atoms to higher states or which are called excited states. So if we talk about the sodium, so we know that the atomic number of sodium is 11. So means the last electron is in third shell. And that is present in 3s orbital. So when energy is not supplied, so electron is present in 3s, 3s orbital. And when external energy is supplied, so this valence electron that gets excited and in case of sodium this electron excites in three energy levels that is it is promoted to 3p 4p and 5p by getting energy from atmosphere and these excited states means now electron is in these states 3p 4p and 5p and in these states these are the transient states so soon it return back from these states by emission of radiation and these radiations are generally in the region of what do you say visible or UV region so when it comes from 5p 4p and 3p so we get three lines three emission lines and they are obtained at 285 330 and 590 nanometer which is the characteristic of sodium element mean in case of sodium we always get these three lines at these wavelengths so a transition to or from the ground state that's called resonance transition and the resulting spectral line due to these resonance transition that is called resonance line now we will discuss specifically the flame emission spectrometry flame emission spectrometry is a type of emission spectroscopy in which the excitation source is flame it is also known as flame photometry as the source of excitation energy is flame so flame photometry is the technique in which concentration of metal in solution may be determined by spraying the solution into the flame so the sample in which we want to analyze that which elements are present so that sample in the form of solution 
so that is separate into flame so definitely there is the phenomena of excitation and then relaxation so there is the emission of lines the intensity of emitted light that is compared with that of the energy emitted by the standard solution of metals so the intensity of emitted light it is compared to the standard solution of metals by which we get the uh, concentration of elements present in our solution so i will tell you that uh, for qualitative analysis definitely we will get different spectral lines and their position the position of lines that will give us the qualitative information while the intensity of these lines that will give us the quantitative information colors of the flame depend on which element is present in the flame and this thing this emission phenomena this is actually the it makes the basis of the test which is called the flame test you know that when we are going to analyze different elements present in salt so we take some quantity of salt and we take it into the flame and we observe different colors so you can see the barium show the green flame the strontium that show the red sodium yellow copper green then uh, potassium is somewhat purple color so actually they do excite in the flame and they return back to their ground state by the emission of radiations which appear uh, uh, which appear us to as in different colors in this test light of specific wavelength is being emitted by thermally excited atoms in flame so if that fall in the visible range so definitely that will appear to us as colored another example for this one is the neon sign we know that the signs in which neon gas is filled which is energized by the electricity and definitely when it returns back to the ground state so different colors will be produced in flame photometry the sample is atomized in hot flame I mean sample is introduced into hot flame in the form of spray fine droplets and that then that is at moist mean it is converted into gaseous atoms and the atoms are then thermally excited to higher energy levels and as they return to the ground state the light of characteristic wavelengths is emitted by selecting characteristic spectral line uh, this uh, this may be done by the use of monochromators and measuring its intensity it's possible to analyze sample qualitatively and quantitatively mean how much lines are uh, what do you say obtain uh, how how much lines are what do you say there and uh, what is the wavelength of these lines so this give us the qualitative information and their intensity this makes us able to get the quantitative data from it in flame photometry the source of excitation is flame so definitely it's flame which is of and the flame is of low energy source means the temperature is quite very much low as compared to the other sources like plasma so emission spectrum is quite simple as there are few emission lines so that is due to low energy source uh, which is flame now in order to understand the every possible types of processes occurring in the flame we are going to take an example of calcium chloride so let calcium chloride that is being introduced in the flame in the form of solution so here it is being introduced you can assume here is the phenomenon of nebul nebulization so calcium chloride that is in the form of fine droplets so that is introduced into the flame so then first of all there is the desolvation process so solvent is removed so calcium chloride from solution it is converted into gaseous form then by getting further energy from the flame which is also called dissociation energy 
so this calcium chloride molecule these are broken into calcium atoms and chlorine atoms now there might be different possibilities for example these calcium atoms which are present in their ground state they may get energy further energy from the flame and that energy is called excitation energy so they may get excited to their higher energy levels and these energy levels or these states are the transient states so soon they will return back to their ground state by emission of radiations which will give us the emission spectra there might be some other possibilities as well these atoms for example let like calcium it may get further energy from the flame which is called ionization energy and this energy may remove one or more electrons from calcium atom and that is converted into calcium ion now this calcium ion that may get further energy from the flame which is called excitation energy so it may get excited in the form of ion so we can see over here there are some other possibilities like this ground state calcium atom that may react with flame gases so there are present oxygen so that may be converted into calcium oxide or calcium hydroxides and these oxides and hydroxides they may get further excitation energy from the flame and they might be excited in the form of oxides and hydroxides so let me make it clear for you guys that in flame emission we are interested in these species while in atomic absorption spectroscopy we are interested in these ground state calcium atoms so dear students in atomic emission spectroscopy there are different steps which are common with that of atomic absorption spectroscopy and what are these let's see we have seen sample introduction system so we have already already seen the video of atomic absorption spectroscopy and in that video we have seen the sample introduction system in how to introduce our sample in which we have seen uh, how to introduce sample in gaseous state in liquid state in solution state and in solid state then we have already seen the process of nebulization in which our sample is being converted into fine droplets and that is done by the apparatus which is called nebulizers and then we have seen the lab laser ab ablation which is the technique which is used to introduce solid samples into the atmosphere we have seen the flame atmosphere in detail and further we have seen the properties of flame and we have seen the various types of flames as well then we have already seen the burners and its types like premix chamber burner and total consumption burner so all of these steps these are also common mean these are also uh, present in atomic emission spectroscopy so these are being used or practiced in atomic emission spectroscopy so if you didn't see my video of atomic absorption spectroscopy so i am putting a link here on the right corner in the i button and you can see here uh, in the link the video of atomic absorption spectroscopy so all of these things are this uh, have been discussed in detail there so you can see it there and here is the block diagram of flame photometer so here is the sample which is generally introduced in the form of solution and you can see here is the compressed air supply and here is the compressed fuel supply which is supplied over here so by using air what do you say through the venturi effect the sample is drawn through this capillary and that enters into this nebulizer and nebulizer convert these uh, sample solution into fine droplets so now this sample solution in the form of fine droplets it mixes with this air and fuel in this chamber which is called premix chamber so here all of these three components are mixed sample air and fuel and then the sample is supplied into this flame 
and here is the phenomena of excitation and emission so lines are emitted from here and then there is a monochromator monochromator mean we have adjusted the slit of the exit slit of the monochromator means uh, 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 we are interested to study uh, the what wavelength of the radiation so we have set our monochromator at that wavelength so only that wavelength is allowed to emit from here and the next part is the detector so generally the photomultiplier tube is used as detector uh, so radiation fall on the detector and produce electric current which is amplified here in amplifier and then recorded uh, here in the form of peak spectrum on computer screen so all of these components are uh, have already been explained in our previous video of atomic absorption spectroscopy and the instrumentation of UV visible spectroscopy and the links of these videos have been uh, what do you say attached in here in I button so you can watch over there and in the end there are advantages of flame emission spectroscopy so no light source is required if we compare it with atomic absorption spectroscopy so we know that a light source is always required there so in case of atomic emission spectroscopy no light source is required only flame is required so flame emission spectroscopy it can be used quite conveniently then flame spectra have comparatively few lines so consequently it is easier to resolve and identify the individual elements even in the presence of many elements then the equipment is less costly and it needs less space as compared to the atomic absorption spectrophotometer then the analytical procedures require less experience to set up the instrument and carry out studies on it means it is quite simple and then it is possible in some cases to determine non metals as well like phosphorus and sulfur same by the emission through the molecular species that occur in the flame so these are the advantages of flame emission spectroscopy so dear students this is all about the current video thanks for watching if you like my video like it and if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it right now to get in touch with my upcoming videos so thanks for watching thank you very much